Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a fun compilation of your top 20 Dollar Tree DIYs this year. If you see a project you would like to recreate and need a more detailed version, the full video link will be listed next to the project number in the description box below. I hope you enjoy! Grab one of Dollar Tree's wood rounds with the welcome sign on the front and stain it whatever color you like on the front and the back. Then go over the tops of the lettering with some black paint, add in some greenery using some hot glue, and some of your favorite colored flowers. Create a bow to glue right to the center, and now you have a beautiful, inexpensive sign to greet your guests. Using six of Dollar Tree's wood cubes with the drawer inserts, stain each piece with your favorite stain color. I am using antique wax. Then attach three of those together using wood glue and hot glue to make two sets of three. Reinsert your drawers with the design towards the back. Then using one of Dollar Tree's wood crates and a house shape sign, remove the backing from the house shape and stain both of these with the same stain color. Cut down some craft sticks so that you'll be able to glue those to the inside to cover up the handles and stain those the same color. Paint the backboard as well as the bottom of the inside of that crate with some black paint and then you can glue down your craft stick pieces so that it'll have a seamless look. Reattach your backing, paint some tumbling tower pieces as well as some wood cubes black to create feet for the bottom of your shelf. Then attach the wood crate to each side of the set of three drawers and attach the house on top of the wood crate in the center. Then you can add some more wood cubes to the center to create a shelf and cut down a few more craft sticks and stain those the same color. Glue down one wood cube to each of the drawer fronts to serve as handles and then glue the craft sticks under the wood cubes for the shelf as well as the top and then finish off the front with another craft stick. Grab one of Dollar Tree's arched decor pieces, remove the sign from the front, and spray paint the arch black. Using one of their wood plaques, stain it the color of your choice, and then reattach the sign that originally came on it. Then attach your arch piece on top of your wood plaque using some permanent glue as well as some hot glue. Then add in one of Dollar Tree's votive candles, Create a pretty candle ring for it and use one of their LED votive candle lights. Using two of Dollar Tree's wired baskets, we're going to paint these black and we're also using two of Dollar Tree's glass containers that look like milk jugs. Paint the emblem on the front as well as a few other areas with black paint, then cover that with some white paint, and then lightly sand over the areas that you painted black to bring out that emblem and give it a distressed look. Wrap some twine around the top and use this twine to attach it to the inside of each of those wire baskets. You can tie that around through the basket and wrap it back around to the front. Tie a cute bow and then create a hanger using a separate piece of twine. Now you have a beautiful set of hanging decor pieces. Using two of Dollar Tree or Family Dollar's racetracks and a wood round from Dollar Tree, we're going to screw one end of the racetrack into the wood round 
and then we'll screw the other end right opposite of the original one. Then we'll take the second racetrack and screw one side down and pull it over to attach on the other side and paint it black. Then we're going to glue the top two pieces together. I'm also using a candle cup and another round wood piece, both of these from Hobby Lobby. Paint those black and we're going to use the round wood piece as a base for our candle holder. Attach the candle cup to the top as a decorative ornament and then add in your favorite glass candle holder or battery operated candle. I do not recommend using any type of flamed candle. Make sure you're using a battery operated candle for this project. For this project, I am using one of Family Dollar's beautiful wooden jewelry boxes. It cost about $3. Remove the lid as well as both of the hinges and cut down a few paint sticks so that we'll be able to glue two of these together, the smaller ones, and then two of the larger ones together. This is going to create a frame for the lid of the jewelry box. We're then gonna glue each of these down to create the frame. And I have all of the exact measurements in the original video, and that is in my description box below. Once you have them all glued, they should look something like this. We're gonna cut down some wooden dowels to the height that we want our candle holder to be and glue each dowel into each corner of this lid. It should be looking something like this. You're also going to need some barbecue skewers and cut the tips off. We're gonna create a design a little later on. Stain all of your pieces the color of your choice. I am using Waverly's Antique Wax. Once the stain dries, we can then attach the top piece to the inside of that jewelry box. Then we'll take our barbecue skewers to create an X pattern on the inside back of the jewelry box and then flip it over and create the same pattern on the front. Now you can add one of Dollar Tree's LED battery operated candles to the inside and you have a very unique, gorgeous candle holder. The next project is an inspired piece from Antique Farmhouse. Take one of Dollar Tree's round wood signs and tape a portion so that you'll be able to paint the top and bottom with two coats of white paint. Once removing the tape, dry brush the same white paint in the unpainted area to give it a nice distressed look. I'm going to freehand the design at the bottom of the sign. I'm just looking at my phone and just drawing according to what the inspiration piece looks like. Um, if you're like me, I love to watch things like this just come to life. But if you don't like watching this, then you may want to skip ahead about a minute and a half. I'm just going to play some music and I hope you enjoy. Here is a close-up after I've finished drawing it out with the pencil. Now I'm going to go back over it with a Sharpie. I'm going to use a thicker Sharpie on some of the larger areas and then a fine tip Sharpie on those fine detailed areas. Again, I'm going to play a little bit of music and I hope you guys enjoy.
Now I'm going to add a decal that I made on my Cricut, but it's also a free printable on my website, and the link to my website is in the description box below. Add a few painted beads to a piece of twine to create a gorgeous hanger for this piece. For this project, you'll need a Dollar Tree sign as well as one of their Easter egg wreath forms. Trace the center of the wreath form onto the sign and cut that out, and then paint the sign itself with white paint. Using one of Dollar Tree's window clings, we're going to attach that to the sign using Mod Podge. And using some of Dollar Tree's styrofoam eggs, paint those in various different spring colors. Cover your wired wreath form using some burlap ribbon and just hot glue it periodically. You want to be able to stick some florals down into the overlapping pieces of the burlap. Attach the sign using some hot glue directly on top of your wreath form. Glue in some greenery and florals underneath the overlapped burlap and then glue in your styrofoam eggs and you have a gorgeous Easter wreath. Using three of Family Dollar's $1 house-shaped decor pieces, paint one with white paint and two with celery chalk paint. Cover the one that you painted white with some scrapbook paper. This came from Hobby Lobby. And I'm also using some of their spring wood cutouts from Hobby Lobby, and I stained those with antique wax. Then I can attach one to each one of the greenhouses and you have a gorgeous spring or Easter decor piece. For this project, I am using one of these house shapes from Family Dollar for a dollar, and the other two came from Dollar General for a dollar and 50 cent a piece. Remove all of the embellishments, and then we're going to paint two of those, the smaller one and one of the larger ones with white chalk paint, and the other larger one I'm going to paint with three coats of chalk paint in the color moss. Now the larger one that I painted white is a base coat so that I can add some antique wax on top of that to give it a faux wood look. You're going to need three command strips, paint each one of those including the hooks black, as well as the roof on all three houses. Then you can attach the smaller one in the center of the other two larger ones. And then we're going to glue the command strips to the bottom of each one. And then the embellishment that we took off of the center, I'm going to add a decal, and I'll glue that right in the center of the middle house. Dollar General's Wooden Garden Stakes. They are three quarters of an inch square. They sell for a dollar a piece. We're gonna cut two of those down to 24 and 5 eighths of an inch, and the other two down to 18 and 1 quarter of an inch to create a frame. I'm gonna have the top and bottom piece rest on top of the two side pieces. Pre-drill a hole from the longer end into the shorter ends and then attach each of the corners with a wood screw. Now we're going to use four of Dollar Tree's very long barbecue skewers. We actually end up only needing three of those. Give the entire frame as well as those barbecue skewers two coats of white paint. Using two of Dollar Tree's garden fences, remove all of the outside tabs as well as the feet for both pieces. Then flip them opposite of each other with the back side facing you and glue down some craft sticks, leaving a little bit of the craft stick sticking out of the edge. This is what we're going to use to attach it to our frame. We're also going to cut down some smaller pieces to put on the bottom and top outside edges, as well as on the center of each of those arches, leaving the same distance of craft sticks sticking out on each end. 
We'll then flip it back over to the front and cover up some of that spacing with some black paint. And then we can attach it to the back side of our wood frame. Just lie it on there and then hot glue each one of those craft sticks directly to the back side of the frame. Then you can flip this over where the front is now facing you and we're going to cut down those barbecue skewers to attach in between each of the arches. We're going to attach that using some hot glue and then cut down the remainder of the barbecue skewers to fit in between each of those barbecue skewers and hot glue those down. What a gorgeous piece this turned out to be. I love how this project turned out and I cannot wait to share with you how well it looks with our next project. We're going to use that short piece of the garden stake that we cut off. We're going to measure down four and one quarter of an inch from the top and use our handheld saw to cut that off. Pre-drill a hole in the center of the shortest piece on each end and then take the longer piece, not the end with the point, the other end, in the center of that towards the top and we're going to drill that all the way through. This is how we're going to connect this piece to the shorter piece. Apply a screw through the piece with the pointed end and we're going to screw that into one of those pre-drilled holes on the other end. For the other pre-drilled hole, I'm going to add a hook. I had this hook on hand, but you can find them at Walmart. Hand screw that in, leaving the hook facing upwards. We're also using two of these LED hanging lamps from Dollar Tree. We're gonna remove that light bulb piece. We're gonna tuck our light strand back down inside of that. We're going to cover that with some tape, as well as flip that over, and on the opposite side, cover that with some tape so that when we get ready to paint these, we won't get any paint inside of that battery compartment. We're using two of Dollar Tree's wired baskets, and I've removed the handles from the lampshades. We have our wood pieces, as well as our wired baskets, and we're gonna spray paint each of these with two coats of black paint. After removing the tape, I still want the top part of the lampshade to be black, so I'm going to paint that with some chalk paint and a brush so that I can carefully make sure that I do not get any paint down into the battery compartment. Then I can remove the light strand and tuck that back into the light bulb and reattach it. Now once I have all of those to put back together, it is time for us to make our hanging lamp. So this is the bottom part of the basket. I'm going to set the lampshade underneath the basket and then attach it with the hook or the hanger that came with it into the center section of each of the lamps. Then we can just hang that right on top of the hook that we have on our wood piece. Now for mine, I'm gonna hang them up with two of the pitcher hangers on the back, but you could also screw this straight into the wall. And you guys, look how beautiful they turned out for about $2.50 each, and they are gorgeous with our faux wrought iron window. Grab a Dollar Tree wood round as well as one of their self-adhesive wall tiles. Use your wood round to trace and cut out your tile and then attach it to the wood using some E6000. Go over the tile itself with some ocean blue chalk paint. Once that dries, take a sponge applicator brush and apply some white chalk paint on top of all of the raised edges. Take a Dollar Tree pizza pan and paint the rim as well as a little bit on the inside with some white chalk paint and then once that dries go over it with some antique wax to give it a faux wood look. Glue some tumbling tower pieces down to the inside of the pizza pan so that you'll be able to raise your round up by gluing that on top of the tumbling tower pieces. Then you can add a hanger to the back with some twine and ribbon and glue or display it on a stand. I love how this project turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. Using two of Dollar Tree's barn-shaped signs, remove the tag as well as the roof on the front. Then remove the paper from at least one of the barn signs, because you're going to use the back side of one of them and the front side of the other. We're also using some Dollar Tree wood planks. Set your barns up where the chimneys are on the same side and then line one of those wood planks up so that you can draw out the chimney for each side. Cut that out and make sure that it's gonna fit. We're also going to cut on that same piece a small rectangle so that we'll be able to pull tissues from a tissue box through this. 
sand everything down, and we're going to have three full wood plank pieces, the piece that we just cut, two smaller pieces that are going to go on the bottom, as well as the roof pieces. Go over each of those with some antique wax, and then paint the front of one of the barns and the back of another barn with some white paint, as well as two more wood planks. Cut out some craft sticks to make a window and a door for each set. Once you've sanded all those pieces, remove them from the front of the signs and give each of those a coat of the antique wax. Then we're going to take those two smaller pieces that we cut to use as a guide on the front of the barns so that we can tape that, go over it with some white paint, and then some antique wax to give it that wood look so it will be cohesive all the way around. Once that dries, glue the window and the door to each of the barn sets. Then we're going to set those up with the chimneys facing you and we're going to glue down that smaller piece that we cut for the bottom side. Then we'll add our wood plank on the side that is painted white. We can flip that over to the other side and add our white plank as well as that small wood piece. Then we can glue on the roof. We're going to start with one full piece on the side below the chimney. Then we can add our piece that has the cutouts for the chimney. Then we can turn it around and do the other side with two full pieces. Then glue the fronts of each of the barns back on, and this is going to make the perfect tissue box holder. Now I know this is going very fast, but I do have the detailed video in my description box below. To add some extra cuteness, you can cut some more craft sticks down, stain those, and give it some trim on each of the corners. This fits perfectly over the Dollar Tree tissue box. I love how this turned out and I really hope you guys like it too. Large mason jar signs. We're going to flip it over and measure from the bottom about five and five eighths of an inch. Make a mark on each side. Cut that out with our utility knife. We're going to take one of Walmart's five gallon paint stir sticks and cut it down to 11 inches. Attach the sign to the paint stick about halfway down and give it a coat of a brown oxide acrylic paint. And grab one of Dollar Tree's wood acorn signs and we're going to give it a coat of the color khaki. Place the hat at the top of the acorn sign and hold it in place with some clamps while using a pencil to draw the outline of the face. Then fill it in with some acrylic paint in the color brown oxide, white, and spice pumpkin. Then fill in the eyes with some black paint and don't forget to use the white for highlights in the eyes. Also use a sharpie for the outline and to create some stitching around the face. Add in some raffia, or in this case a hula skirt for hair, and then attach the hat. Attach a piece of burlap ribbon as well as some fall fabric to create a patch, and use the fall fabric to create a bow tie. Using a Dollar Tree pizza pan, give the center two coats of white chalk paint and the rim two coats of celery chalk paint. Then glue some nautical rope to the inside rim and grab one of these signs from Dollar Tree and use the truck from that. Also use a Woodward cutout and give it some stain. Create a floral swag as well as a bow to attach to the top. Add your truck to the center and then your thankful word right on top of that. Create a hanger for the back and you have a gorgeous fall wreath. Using three Dollar Tree pizza pans, paint all of the outside rims brown. Then grab some fall fabric, cut that in a circle, and then cut it in half to attach to 
two of the pans. Use this Dollar Tree sign to fill in the third pan and then add some tumbling tower pieces so that you'll be able to glue these two pans on top of each other. Add a couple of more tumbling tower pieces and some glue so that you can add your center pan directly on top. Add a beaded hanger on the back. Create a beautiful bow with some fall florals and attach that to the top. Add a wood stem to the center at the top to complete your project. one of Dollar Tree's garden dishes, as well as two of the plastic scalloped bowls. I painted the largest one in red chalk paint, one of the smaller ones in a blue chalk paint, and the other one in a yellow chalk paint. Once they dry, use various different size sponge applicators from Dollar Tree to create perfect white dots. We are making some gorgeous outdoor mushrooms. Do that in various sizes for each one. We're also gonna need two of Dollar Tree's terracotta pots and a plastic tumbler. Give each of those two coats of white chalk paint. Once everything has dried, make sure to go over everything with a layer of Mod Podge. This is very important since they're gonna be outdoors. Once the Mod Podge dries, attach the tumbler to the inside center of the largest garden dish with a permanent glue and then attach a terracotta pot to each of the smaller scalloped bowls. This project turned out absolutely gorgeous and I had these sitting outside all summer long. They did not fade and they still look as good as they did the day I made them. Grab one of their Nativity wood sets, give that a coat of white paint, remove the star from another Dollar Tree sign, and paint the back of that with some white paint. Using an 8x10 canvas, we're going to paint that with some blue ocean chalk paint, and then with a wet brush, go over it with a little bit of black, and then with your original brush that you painted it blue, blend all of that in. Once it dries, go back and add a little bit more blue to give it some depth and character to your piece. Then you can attach all of your nativity pieces as well as that star using some hot glue. Then splatter a little bit of white paint all throughout to create some beautiful stars. Using a five and three quarter inch glass plate from Dollar Tree, as well as one of their church ornaments and their micro LED lights, feed a few of those lights into the church, glue that down to the plate. We're also gonna be using three of their flocked Christmas trees, wrap the lights around those trees, add in a few angels in the front and some faux snow, and you have an absolutely gorgeous Christmas decor piece that is absolutely beautiful lit up at night. Thank you for spending time with me today. Please take care and I'll see you next time.